Okay. Good evening, all. We welcome you to this program, um, Emmanuel District Family Life a Clinic. We have now started, and our host, uh, Pastor Skumbuza Dube, is to take us through. We welcome you all. May God bless you as you listen to this program that has got uh, lessons for our lives today. We, are, we thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the welcome. And uh, we, we are continuing. We are on day three of this very important uh, week, Family Life Week for Emmanuel District. And um, to begin, we shall pause for a moment of prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, we want to thank you for being so good and being so kind to us and allowing us that we may see the light of day and uh, to come to this very evening. We are praying that you may be with us. And we want to remember each family that will be covered by the sound of this voice. Some are child-headed families, some are families where there is a widow that is leading, some are families where there is a widow that is leading, and some are families where there are no children. I want to pray for all the families that this lesson for today may be relevant for whatever family set up that is there. And this is our most humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so today we have a very important lesson in our uh, the beautiful theme that we are following, the theme of uh, dealing with the enemies of the family. Um, the beautiful lesson that we are having today is the thief of hearts. Today I just got into the internet and I just um, uh, browsed and I saw these uh, wonderful quotations. Some are painful, some are um, interesting, and I just want to share them with you. And these are the quotations that I saw today. Uh, one quotation was saying, you stole my heart, so the best revenge is to steal your last name. And uh, now these, these are people maybe that are preparing uh, to get married and they are saying, you stole my heart. So the best revenge that I can do is to steal your last name. This is one, one of them that I saw. And another one that I saw was saying, wouldn't it be perfect? Wouldn't it be the perfect crime? If I stole your heart, then you stole mine. I found this to be a very interesting one. And then I, I found this one. And um, this one was saying, my heart is not broken. It's gone completely. You have stolen it. And I want it back. As someone was uh, talking about that. And then here is another painful one uh, that speaks about a painful uh, situation. This one says, you broke my heart and then you stole it. Who steals a broken heart? It's broken. Just give it back to me and let me heal. I guess this comes after a situation when somebody who was expecting that the heart was going to be kept safe, unfortunately, the heart was not kept safe. And so, this is one of uh, those, uh, those quotations. Another one that I saw, which is uh, also painful, was saying, I give you my heart. I sold my soul. I shared the darkest parts of myself. And you broke me. You tore me apart. You stole the sunlight away from me. This sounds very painful indeed. As I'm looking at this, I am wondering, there are people out there, some are planning to get married, some are already married, and some are 
thinking or contemplating about on this thing called marriage. And they are wondering, should I give my heart to somebody? Should I allow somebody to steal my heart? Should I allow somebody to actually do that kind of thing? Could I steal somebody's heart? Or could, could somebody steal my heart? And um, the last one that I saw was saying, you stole my heart before even, before I, you stole my heart before I had the chance to give it to you. Thank you, my thief, for committing this perfect crime. And I guess somebody who says this will be rejoicing because uh, this person who has stolen their heart has not been faithful. But it is unfortunate uh, these days there are people who steal hearts, but when they steal their hearts, they steal their hearts, they use their hearts, they reuse their hearts, they refuse their hearts, they do terrible things on those hearts. And this is something that is painful. And we are talking today about the stealing of hearts, the thief of hearts. And we want to identify the thief of hearts. In uh, the circles of love, a boyfriend can be a stealer, a thief of hearts. And uh, in the religious circles, we can talk about Jesus stealing my heart, but when Jesus steals your heart, he actually bats it with his own blood and he sacrifices for that heart and he doesn't just steal their heart for nothing. When he steals their heart, he does something that is very grand about the heart. And when he steals it, it will be a perfect crime. Like this person was saying, you stole my heart before even, before even, before I even had ch the chance to give it to you. Thank you, my thief, for committing this perfect crime. If you have a good relationship with Jesus, you can perfectly say, you stole my heart before I even had the chance to give it to you. Thank you, my thief, for committing this perfect crime. But I want to uh, just take time and uh, slide into the negative because we are talking about uh, handling the enemies of the family. And I want to get to, uh, to get us to identify the thief of hearts in the families. You can think about them. There are so many of them uh, that are there that are stealing hearts, thief of hearts. And when you think deeply about it, sometimes husbands are stolen. Uh, their hearts have their, they have, they have their hearts stolen by people who are not uh, their wives. And sometimes the children have their hearts stolen from the family by people who are not connected to the family. And sometimes wives have got their hearts stolen by people who are not their wives. And sometimes parents have their hearts stolen by people that are or things that are not their uh, maybe things that are not the family or people that are not part of the family. There are people that are today submerged into their work and their work has become a thief of hearts. They have given everything to the vocation that they are in. They've given their whole hearts, their whole diligence to that very important um, I think it, to them it is important, but unfortunately it has sucked out all the energy that is supposed to be devoted to the family and that energy has been directed to that thing or to that person. But I want us to, as we wind up the, the, the lesson today, the objective of the lesson today 
is that our hearts may be stolen by our family members. There are people who are able to love all people around them and forget about the very important people that are surrounding their lives. And so today, the objective of the lesson is that the perfect thief of hearts may be my brother, may be my sister, may be my aunt, may be my wife, may be my family members. It is very important that the thief of hearts be our family members. While I'm at that, I just want to come to something that is a negative thief that has stolen the hearts of many people and has caused many families to collapse and it has caused many relationships to crack and has caused many families that would have been thriving to be surviving. That is the thief of hearts. Let's talk about it. And the thief of hearts that I want to talk about today is the social media. And I want to talk about the signs of being stolen. Stolen. What are the signs, uh, the indicators that you are already stolen by social media? Remember, some time ago, a young lady speaking to his husband, to her husband, he said to her husband, oh dear, how I wish I was your phone. How I desire that I could be your phone. It is my desire. I would be the happiest person. And the wife say, and the, and the husband said, why? He says, I would be enjoying seeing you smiling at me, seeing you touching me all the time, seeing you waking up in the morning and attending to me, seeing you being the last person, last person you would talk to before you dive down into the sheets. I wish I was your phone. I don't know, I'm just wondering, and I'm asking myself a question. Should it be that kind of a situation when I can say, when a husband can say, when a parent can say, when a child can say, when, ever, when somebody can say, I wish I was your phone. It is unfortunate that the phone uh, it is unfortunate that the media has actually taken over homes. So today, I just want to begin by uh, talking about signs of being stolen by this thief of hearts. And so what are these signs? Sign number one. What could be the sign that I am stolen by this thief of hearts? You see, now, there are so many of these social media platforms. It is said that an average person spends about three hours, and this is uh, argumentative, uh, uh, viewing the phone. And, uh, and, and, and if, if, um, if, if at all, um, uh, this time, I, maybe in, during the lockdown, this time can actually be increased. And I guess this time is now even much more because people are spending more time on their phone than ever before. And so I'm thinking to myself, what is it? What are the signs that 
Today, I am hooked. Today, I am now part of the social media and I'm suffering and the problem that I am suffering and the challenge that I am suffering is that I am now an addict of social media. What is it that I can do? What is it that I can do so that I will be free and so that my family also may be free? Besides that, what are the signs? What are the signs that show that I am already hooked? What are those signs that show that I am hooked to this thief of hearts? What are those signs? And if the signs are there, what am I supposed to do? And how am I supposed to deal with these signs that show that I am already hooked? So let's go to sign number one. Sign number one. When the first thing that you do in the morning, the first thing that you attend to in the morning is your phone when you wake up. Know that, know that you are already stolen by the thief of hearts. When the first thing that you do or the first thing that you attend to in the morning is social media, is social media, then you are already stolen. Your heart is already stolen. So check, check your routine. Every day when you wake up, wake up in the morning, what is it? What is the first thing that you do? Do you go to check on the notifications? What is it that you do? If it is social media, then it totally shows that you are already hooked. Sign number two of being stolen by this thief of time. What is sign number two of being stolen by this thief of the family? Thief of hearts. Thief. This thief steals. What is sign number two? Sign number two is that when you post, you see, when you post and then you constantly check for likes, for shares, for retweets, and all those things, then it shows that you are already hooked. You are already hooked. You have a challenge. Then you are in the midst of something that needs to be corrected. Um, I, I, I don't know whether you can relate to this. Um, the natural human being craves for affirmation. We all crave for affirmation. We all crave for a thumbs up. We all crave for uh, people to like our, to follow us on Instagram, to follow us on LinkedIn, to follow us on Twitter, to, for, to, to, to like our pages, to, we, to, to like our statuses, to view our stories, to view our statuses, and we like to check. And so whenever we see that becoming a norm, and now it is a constant, um, you may be hooked when you see that kind of a thing happening. I hope people can actually relate to this kind of a thing. So it is a natural human phenomenon to crave for, uh, for, for being celebrated. If no one is celebrating me, then I have a problem and I think to myself, what wrong have I done? For those of you who are doing business and you have posted and you have posted a business post that you have actually put on social media and nobody is actually responding, you have a problem. You say, what is wrong? Is it my post or whatever? But more so, there is something that eats up your inner core and you think, I am not enough 
if somebody has not affirmed me. So the thief of hearts definitely does that kind of a thing. And, um, um, and that's one sign that definitely at this time, I am already hooked. Now, what is the third sign of being hooked? What is the third sign? The third sign of being hooked is uh, one that is a bit painful. It's when your mental wellness is now dependent on the availability of social media connectivity. Maybe you may think this is a bit far-fetched. Those who have done research have actually uh, made a connection of uh, social media with mental wellness. There are researches, a number of researches that have actually been carried out that have actually shown that today uh, people are actually uh, having a difficult time uh, 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 if they are not connected to social media. And so they will have a problem when, when they are not having anyone responding to, uh, uh, their life, to their posts and when they are not connected. Even the absence of, uh, of social media in itself can actually cause the level of, um, of dopamine to actually drop. Um, uh, dopamine is a happy hormone, maybe it's serotonin as well. Those are happy hormones that are, that are there. Dopamine is responsible for the motivation and, uh, and the reward. And uh, so, so, so some have actually made a research to actually check whether there is a connectivity when, 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 when there is a notification, when it goes, it goes and um, there is something that happens uh, to the levels of dopamine. They begin to rise because there is a notification that saying somebody has liked you, somebody has liked your video, somebody has followed, somebody has done this, somebody has followed. So there is actually that kind of a thing. But now it gets worse when we become dependent upon the retweets, upon the likes, upon all these things, it becomes a big problem. And when we become dependent upon these things, they turn out to be, for lack of a better word, allow me to say, these things turn out to be drugs that put us on a high. We we, we will be, if, if we, don't have, we don't have this drug, then at this time we will be having a problem because no one, no one, no one is liking our post. No one is actually sharing. No one is actually enjoying whatever we are watching, whatever we are posting, whatever we are, uh, whatever. The, no one is actually following me. And so that becomes a bit of a problem. So when your mental wellness is now dependent on the availability of social media connectivity, you are now hooked to the thief of time, to the thief of hearts, to the thief of family time. And so this is another thing that we need to pay proper attention to. And then when there is a limited face-to-face -face connectivity in the home and more connectivity to the phone, this is a sign uh, that the thief of hearts is acting up in the home. So the family time is eroded because uh, people are now connecting with people who are far away from them and forgetting people that are close to them. And here is something that I want to bring to light. For those of you who are married, I have a question for you. How many people are in your bedroom? 
How many people do you invite to your bedroom? When you have, when you have, when you have, say four people that you are chatting with and you have your wife already in your bedroom, you have four people that you have invited and the fifth person is your wife or your husband that is feeling neglected because the thief of hearts has stolen you. It has stolen your heart. So let's have more face-to-face -face connectivity in the families and reduce the connectivity to the phone because this does something to the family. Number five, when the time for prayer is swallowed up by time on social media, when time for prayer is now swallowed by time on social media, then there is a big problem. The thief of hearts is already stealing even the heart of Jesus that is supposed to be, uh, it's actually stealing our hearts away from Jesus because our hearts are supposed to be given to Jesus. And the more we are departing from Jesus, the more we depart from family members. And social media actually does that kind of a thing. And number six, this one is something that we really need to pay attention to. When you now enjoy the company of the opposite sex on social media, then the thief of hearts has stolen you. You are already enveloped. And this is a sensitive area in our lives. And we actually have this very important thing that we need to, pray, to pay our proper attention to. And the thing that we need to pay our proper attention to as we are in this family life clinic, it is to take note of the very fact that when we are now enjoying the company of the opposite sex at the expense of the people that are surrounding us, family members, then the thief of hearts has actually stolen us. So let me pause for a moment and maybe uh, get feedback as we look at these signs of being stolen. Can I get feedback? If there is anything that we want to share at this moment, let's feel free before I continue to look at now what are the tools that we can utilize in order to be able to deal with this thief of hearts. So I'll give us this time to uh, provide feedback, any questions, comments, uh, contributions, whatever we want to share at this moment. Any comments? Evening, yes. Pastor. Evening. Yes, um, thank you for that. I'm actually surprised, you know, as you as you went as you're going through this discussion to realize that it is actually happening in our lives. And at times we don't even realize how serious this is until actually it's it's, it's said. Because mm. like the issue of, you know, when you wake up, you, we actually take it for granted. You know, we, we think the first thing that I do when I'm out of my bed is probably just to grab my phone and, and go through whatever anyone has, has sent. And it's, it's, it's shocking. That's how you, you, you actually get addicted to these things. And 
I think said also to note that you don't realize that it's actually an addiction. So I, I thank you for that. It's mm. really, it's really touching. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, it, it, is, it is one thing that actually happens in our lives and it's, it's actually easy for, 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 for us when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you think about is we go grab my phone and check whatever updates that we're taking, I mean, whatever. It's, it, seems, it seems nice to, to actually do that kind of thing, but um, um, it's, it's something that we need to be worried about. Any other comment before I proceed? But Pastor, what do you do when it is something spiritual that maybe like you have set this time, six o'clock, we're gonna have family life, and we are on social media and also it goes in, in our private phones we will yeah. set up also the time that we say right i'm going to hear my devotion there or anything that is similar to that what 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 is the take on that uh, what are we supposed to do beautiful beautiful that's a very beautiful question see now this is a, a, a different thing altogether but um I am using because there is a, a rightful use of this thief of hearts, and there is negative use of this thief of hearts. Right now, we are using social media to actually have this session, and uh, we are connected um, using these platforms, which is a very a good thing. But then it becomes a problem um, when the only thing that I attend to is social media at the expense of the rest of the family members and also at the expense of spirituality. So if it is like having prayer, it's prayer time, and maybe we, we, we agreed that we are going to be logging into the phone, we need a bit of discipline as we get to that kind of a discipline is definitely needed in that regard because it's it's very easy to fall prey to this thief of time. It's very it's very it's very easy, very easy. Any other submission before I go any further? Because we now need to say now or that this is the case. What tools do we have? at our disposal in order to be able to deal with this thief of hearts. Allow me to go um, into uh, these important tools that we have at our disposal to be able to deal with this thief of hearts. What tools are at our disposal? I'll just uh, begin with a text. First um, Peter four verse nine. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. This is the ESV. I like the, 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 the how it actually puts it. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. So in a family setup, if the thief of time is now being given more hospitality than the one who is supposed to be given time, then we ought to revise our issues of hospitality because there is no one who is not hospitable. We only give our hospitality to those that are dear to our hearts and to those that have stolen our hearts. So hospitality uh, in spiritual care terms, hospitality is actually allowing another person to have room in my heart. So hospitality is saying, I'm inviting you into my sacred space. So allow me to read this text with my spiritual care eyes. Allow each other 
into each other's hearts without grumbling. And this is destroyed by the thief of hearts. And so let me look at these important tools. And I consider this as a stewardship aspect because the thief of hearts can actually steal our hearts to an extent that we no longer have a real connection with God. So there are things that I want us to consider that can be helpful tools. So usually when we wake up in the morning, we set up, we set time. There are people who are able to wake up without an alarm clock, which is very beautiful. And I have a suggestion if the first thing that you do in the morning is to go to your phone. Maybe you may need to use a separate alarm clock if you, if, if, if you use an alarm clock to wake up. You may need a separate alarm clock that can be aiding you to desist from going to your phone as the first thing. So, if you have a separate alarm clock, this is going to help. And the second thing uh, that I want to highlight is maybe you may need to pay attention to the device notifications. There are device notifications maybe on your laptop device notifications maybe on your on your phone device notification on your on your tablet maybe some of them if you feel that i am now addicted uh, each time a notification comes i just want to check whatever is happening you may need to turn off those notifications because these notifications may be distracting you, you may be, may be distracting family time. This, this is something that also I want to propose. Um, I want to propose a social media fast, a social media fast, where maybe as a family we gather together and we decide we are going to have a social media fast. And how are we going to have it? We set a day where as a family, we will sit down and we shut down all social media platforms. And we say today, we are going to talk heart to heart. No phone, no phone. We just practice that. You practice a social media fast. And then maybe you may say, uh, for starters, let's have a social media fast once a month. Once a month, social media fast once a month. And then we can also have a daily social media fast. How can we have a daily social media fast? And we say, as a family, at this hour, maybe at three o'clock, or maybe at five o'clock, or maybe at six o'clock, or maybe at seven o'clock. This is a daily social media fast where we shut down all social media. I don't know whether I have witnesses in the room about that. Where we have a face-to-face -face interaction and at that hour, it is a holy time for that family, for, for, for the family, a social media fast. And then the fourth tool uh, that I want to bring to our attention, which is a very vital tool, let's have abstinence games. You see, uh, social media is so addictive that you may have a difficulty to try 
and we did out from the family without being very creative. So creativity is necessary. So I propose uh, abstinence games. Uh, maybe one of the games may be, this is dinner time. And then every dinner time, no one is going to touch his or her phone. The person who is going to manage not to touch his phone five times this week is going to get an award. And then there is a reward for that, for abstaining from social media during dinner time. It's a proposal. Another, another, another one can be still an abstinence game. It can be maybe the first person to pick the phone during dinner time is going to get a nice punishment maybe of washing the car. Maybe let's wash the car. Because if, if, if you pick the phone, you are the one who is going to wash the car. Or maybe if you pick the phone, the whole week you will be doing dishes. I'm just thinking, uh, thinking of how you can make this thing creative. So these are the tools that we can actually work on. Take control of social media. Let social media, uh, actually social media should not control you, but you should control social media. These are the four stewardship principles that I want to bring into family life as we are dealing with the thief of hearts. And so uh, as we come to an end of our lesson today, I want to thank you for uh, uh, participating today. And I just want to hear from us the comments that we will be having. And I will read the last quotation. Our quotation uh, for today is the quotation for every day. And this is, this, this is the quotation that we will read daily. The more closely we are united with Jesus Christ, the more tender and affectionate will be our conduct towards one another. And so the thief of hearts will be dealt with, dealt with in a nice way. So can we um, react and have responses to the uh, lesson for today before we have our time for prayer. Thank you very much, Pastor, for those um, insights. They are very informative, and um, yeah, uh, many of us have you know picked a few things from there that we have issues with. And I think really mine is more of a, maybe not a question, but just an add-on okay. and an observation that, you know, more and more we also realize that it's not just adults who uh, are affected by, you know, this social media addiction. Uh, the, the, the devil has also stolen the hearts of our children or is, you know, working on, you know, stealing the hearts of our children because in so many ways they, you know, they also are now hooked on social media and uh, you also begin to realize that, you know, they are also, you know, if they silence in the house, you probably know maybe somebody is on an iPad or is on, you know, on a phone. They may not have been given, you know, the authority to use it, but somehow they've taken it. So deception, is creeping, creeping in, you know, dishonesty and things like that. So I think we really need to, one, pray about it and ask God to help us. And also, two, to lead by example as, as, as parents. And three, maybe to be firmer with our children um, mm -hmm. so that the devil doesn't take control of their young minds and hearts. Definitely, that's very, that's very important. That's very important. I can't add much more than what you have said. There is a question here from Facebook and the question says, some of us conduct business on social media. 
how can we detox from social media? And I just want to make suggestions for those who are on, on uh, doing business on social media. And maybe some of us may have responses right here on the platform, but um, I, I want to propose those who are doing business on social media, um, schedule time, schedule time when you can be doing your posting. Maybe you want to advertise whatever you you are selling or whatever you are, what business you are doing, it is important to schedule time and also to schedule time to respond to the messages. It is unfortunate, maybe this part of the world uh, that the very person who will be managing the social media platform is the very person who will be the owner of the business. But if at all it is possible when your business grows, it is also important to have a person who will be responsible solely for managing social media so that they will be able to respond to the messages uh, that may be coming. Maybe you, somebody may be in need of a quotation there and there. And so that, that is very, very important. I, uh, my answer may not be exhaustive and somebody can act up. And maybe right here in the platform, we can help each other to that in that regard. Because the thief of hearts can actually steal our hearts in trying to do business because we are trying to live and we are following our customers. And at the same time, there are children that need to be attended to. There is a husband, there is a wife that needs to be attended to. Um, they, they, there is a parent that needs to be listened to. So that is very, very, very important. So maybe is there anyone who has something to add in that regard or any other comment beside the one that uh, for answering the question that has been brought? Oscar? Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to appreciate the a practical nature of your presentation. And uh, I think just last week I was watching uh, something called, it's a documentary called The Social Dilemma. I don't know if you've watched that. Okay. Uh, if you haven't, <clears throat> everyone on this call may, may want to make time to, to look it up and, and, and try to watch it. Basically, it talks about how uh, social media is uh, wired or is being engineered psychologically to manipulate uh, individuals. So if you if you notice the algorithms that are on, whether it's uh, Facebook or, or Instagram and things like that, are wired so that you, 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 you want to keep, um, mm. you, you, to keep you engaged, to keep clicking, to keep scrolling, to, mm. to, uh, channel you towards things that will keep wanting you to maybe like or get more likes and and you if if you were a user of social you know some of these like twitter and you mm -hmm. look at it now you look at facebook initially and then you look at it now you look at instagram how it started look at it now you can tell more and more it's being wired to suck us in to wanting to be almost dependent on it mm -hmm. um so this thing is deeper than um, it, 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 it's actually using how the brain works. It, it's people who understand how we are wired psychologically and then engineering, reverse engineering um, the algorithms on these platforms so that at all the different turns where the brain stops to make a decision, the choices we make are to get deeper into our devices, deeper into, you know, uh, mm. the application that you, you'll be using at the time. So it, with how we understand this, the way you have unpacked it, that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a war for our hearts, a war for our minds. Mm. 
if you are fighting someone who has already mapped the way your brain is working and engineered it in such a way that you fall for it subconsciously, you can see that we are really fighting a losing battle to the extent that the suggestions that you've brought are key because we really need to almost like uh, uh, detox. We need to train you pack Thank our you. devices and 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 consciously um, disconnect mm. from from or, or else we 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 are really doomed. But that's also to say there are good things on the, on on social media. This you are broadcasting this on on social media so we mm. should not throw away the the baby with the bathwater but we really need to be alert to the fact that uh, these platforms are wired to move us away from being in control of our minds mm. very 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 important very important that uh, that video once again what's the name of the video once again it's uh, it's called the social dilemma the, the social, social dilemma Social dilemma, yes. Mm. That, that is a very important one to 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 watch. So uh, thank you, thank you very much about uh, for for that for that comment. If there are no further comments, are there any further comments? If there are no further comments, we may uh, come to a close of uh, this meeting. We want to thank you. I don't want to close anybody. Is there anyone who wants to um, react? Is there anyone who wants to react? Okay. All right. I think for today, may the Lord richly bless us. May he help us as we deal with this thief of hearts. It's very, very important. Uh, that whilst it is beneficial, we also desist from suffering from the side effects of uh, this very platform that we are using, even for business, uh, for the preaching of the gospel, uh, for connecting with our family members who are very far away from us, maybe that we may not call over the phone, but maybe that we can speak to, maybe in real time. So, so, so all that, all that is very, very, very important. So um, I just want to thank you for, for coming over. Let's meet tomorrow, same time as we discuss another important uh, subject. And the subject of tomorrow is the neck, the neck breaker the neck breaker. Come tomorrow and we discuss that. Uh, Sister Tracy, do you mind taking us to the Lord in prayer as we close this meeting? Thank you. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Lord, help us to have a sense of discipline to know when we can engage these social platforms and when to stop. Lord, help us help to control our minds so that we remain focused. There are so many things that are happening in the world, Lord. May you protect us from these social evils. May you help us to enjoy the company of each other as families and to be satisfied, Lord, with each other, to be grateful and to accept each other. Lord, help us to be honest so that the devil does not take control of us. Lord, you know the challenges that we are facing as families, our children, our spouses, and other family members. Help us, Lord, to be able to discern the good things that will not disturb us spiritually. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for uh, being on this.